Upongo. It's her. It's that devil woman. Oh, must be Cruella. Your dearly devoted old schoolmate. Cruella de Vil. That's it. Cruella de Vil. Cruella de Vil. If she doesn't scare you, no evil thing will. Oh, to Roger. see her is to take a sudden chill. Oh. Cruella, Cruella, she's like a spider waiting for the kill. Roger, Look she'll out, hear you. Cruella, the bird. Let her in, Nanny. Anita, darling. How are you? Miserable, darling, as usual. Perfectly wretched. Where are they? Where are they? For heaven's sakes, where are they? Oh, Cruella, I need the daughters of lightning to be released throughout the world. And women, we are needed. Daughters, we are needed. God is raising up his daughters all over the world because we are a prophet. We are prophets. We are homemakers. We are put your baker candlestick makers and we can do it all and still do the work that God has called us to do. That I, I curse all the lies that I've been dabbling and I curse all the witchcraft because I tried to do something that I wasn't. And Holy Spirit, I ask that the fire and the baptism again of your fire, of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, would ignite a generation, Lord God, that would ignite a generation of dread champions to arise. God says we are entering into our finest hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, that's right. Welcome to the 2.30 Report, where we review the very worst of late night TV. And uh, this week, we're having a look at late night Christian shows. Now, uh, Channel 10 runs this stuff at four in the morning, so they need something pretty full on to get your attention. And I'll tell you what, the Lord certainly does provide. Lieber's Voice of Victory Broadcast, and we are blessed today. Now, that is Ken Copeland, and if you think he's hokey, you should check out his daughter, Kelly. Ladies, when you're doing laundry, if you're grouchy about it, are you doing laundry in the love of God? Take the laundry from Anita and hand it to me. Is that difficult? Because when you do laundry in the love of God, you can get a harvest. <laughs> Now, you may find this hard to believe, but Kelly actually makes more sense than her dad and his mate. The word, the Hebrew word yeah. translated thing yeah. is word. Is word. Right. Every thing mm -hmm. came out of the word, or the word, you back to seed again. Uh -huh. Words are things, or they're word things. So when I say words... I just release a thing, but you don't see the thing when I say it. You heard the thing before you saw the thing, because when I said the thing, it's heard before it's seen. Makes sense to me. As, as Kelly says, I'm telling you, when those two get together, the anointing flows. Well, something is certainly flowing, but I don't know if it's anointing. Okay, all right. Maybe they are a little confusing, but at least these guys know their way around the Bible. What is that scripture where Samuel was talking and and he talked to him about... Now go, stand somewhere until I need you. One thing these Christian shows all have in common is that in the end, they always hit you up for some cash. Now some do it in a pious spiritual way. As a special challenge, please prayerfully consider a gift of $1,200 or more. But not everyone is as prayerfully considered as those guys are. The master of the grab for cash would have to be this guy, our favourite, Mike Murdoch. A lady came up to me one night and she said, My ex-husband has not paid child support in 15 years. I said, So a seed for $58 just as a covenant between you and God. I'm not trying to buy a miracle, that's absurd. But give God a seed of your faith, $58. <laughs> money at all. It's about planting seeds. And I tell you what, planting a seed in Mike's bank account really pays off. Less than 30 days, 
that ex-husband wrote her a check and mailed it to her $65,000. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, surely you can't expect that to happen every time. Expect a harvest. <laughs> expect it. Mm. Expect it. <laughs> Maybe you can, yeah. Okay, so it seems like all you've got to do is give Mike 58 bucks and all kinds of miracles are going to happen. That sounds like crap to me. No, that's no, not. Look, he even gave an ironclad guarantee. If what I have said about sowing and reaping is just for Mike Murdoch's personal gain, may a curse be on me and my ministry, and may my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. So the man is prepared to cleave his own tongue, Julian. That's good enough for me. So I sent off my $58 to Mike, but amazingly, no miracles. Who would have thought? But the good news is that Mike has come up with an even more foolproof way of prompting miracles. God spoke to me and said, tell them about the miracle of the $1,000 seed. Sounds great. Uh, I'll tell you what, if you believe that, Chaz, I have just the man for you, Benny Hinn. Now, Benny is one of those faith healers, right? And he uses all kinds of very strange techniques to heal people. There he goes. Benny cures arthritis, mm -hmm. asthma, cancer, pretty much anything except tone deafness. No other name but the name of the singer. Singer! But you know, what you really learn from Benny is that the cure to every known illness is pushing people over. All these people cured. Look at that. It really does work. I mean, in fact, thanks to Benny, we're now healers too. from Set Free Ministries International. I want to talk to you today about integrity and honor. It is critical more than ever that we walk in integrity, especially as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that when you give someone your word, that it is your word. I know that we are in a season, especially financially in the kingdom of God, you know, the kingdom of God and it cost money. What would it cost us to start again on next year's line? Millions. Can we afford it? Well, yes. Thank you, darling. Now go away. I have um, to talk I'm to I'm watching you. kingdoms being built. <laughs> my ministries, my business. They're, they're, but they're building kingdoms off of other people. Sit down, please. How long have you been working for me? Um, two years last August. And you've done wonderful work in that time. <sighs> Thank you. I don't see you socially, do I? No. And you're not very well known, despite your obvious talent. Well, notoriety doesn't mean very much to me. Your work is fresh and clean, unfettered, unpretentious. It sells. And one of these days, my competitors are going to suss out who you are, and they're going to try to steal you away. Oh, no, if I left, it wouldn't be for another job. Oh, really? What would it be for? Well, I don't know, um, if I met someone. If working here didn't fit in with our plans. Marriage? Perhaps. More good women have been lost to marriage into war, famine, disease and disaster. You have talent, darling. Don't squander it. <laughs> well, I don't think that it's something we have to worry about. I don't have any prospects. Thank God. That's when the kingdom of God catapults into a whole other dimension. I see like a sh of color. I really hear the Spirit. I am speaking right now to those of you that are out there that are dabbling in witchcraft. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am He which searches the reins and the hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works.
He said, I've got something against you because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach. You know what that church did? It rejected the very word of Almighty God, who said, I will not suffer a woman to teach, nor to thwart authority over the man, but they're to learn in sight. Amen. God said that the head of Christ is who? God. The head of man is who? Christ. Amen. The head of woman is who? The man. God's got order in His church. And praise God, it comes from the Father through the Son to the man. God's put there, the pastor of the church. You put the man out of the place. You set up a woman in man's place. Amen. You just blew Christ out of the order. Now, do you know how many churches have been led astray by women? So I'm a prophetess and I'm going to teach you. When I say I'm going to teach you, I'm going to be a pastor today or a preacher. They are out of order with God. First Timothy, amen, chapter 2, I think it's verse 12, you can read it. He said, I will not suffer a woman to teach. He said, i got something against you because you suffer that. He said, I'm writing this on to you that you know how to behave yourself in the house of God. He said, if any man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop has a good report. A bishop is just a pastor. The husband of how many wives? One wife. Hey man, a husband, that's a man with one wife. That's absolutely necessary. He said it must be this way, or he's not a pastor and he's not called to be a pastor. That's just the Word of God. And we say, well, we ain't going to go by that no more. Jesus said, my Word is not going to change. He said, you'll have one that will judge you in the last days. Hey man, it's the Word that I've spoken on to you. I know a preacher, they went down to North Carolina and he was wanting to go to church and he didn't know no church was there and he walked into this church and there was a woman pastor. And he sat down in the back and he said, Lord, there's such anointing on that woman. He said, such anointing. He said, the Lord spoke to him and said, that's not me. Challenge her. Challenge the woman. She kept right on with her preaching. The Lord said, challenge her now. He stood up. He said, if you're of God, let me die. If I'm of God and you're not, let you die. Challenged her. Said she ran outside and fell dead in the field. They said they had homosexuals as victims in that church. Well, why not? If you can do away First Corinthians and Timothy, why not let everything just hang? So why don't they just be the emergent church? You know what the emergent church is? You've heard of it. They do away with this Bible. It's not absolute truth. You don't have to obey it. You go by feelings. If it feels good, do it. If it puts chills down your spine, you do it. It's all right. Every demon in the world, praise God, is getting in that merchant church. Every demon in the world, because they don't know how to try the Spirit to see if it's the Spirit of Almighty God. Popular, and it's the Word of God, and they'll stand when the world's on fire. There's a throwing aside, amen, of God's Word. If I read my Bible right, God has exalted His Word above His own name. If we throw it aside, we're going against God. We're shaking our feet. Hey, God. And that double married man gets up, preaches, I don't care how, what he says, if it's the best thing in the world, if he says he's a pastor or a deacon, he might be saying the absolute truth, but behind his back the devil is saying, see the Bible's not true, you don't have to go by that. You don't have to go by that. Paul didn't know what he was talking about. The Bible says, spiritual, you got to acknowledge of what Paul wrote or the commandments of the Lord. If you're yeah, I'm sick of all these folks coming up in church looking pretty and ain't spending no money. What, what we yeah. gonna do? Pass the collection plate. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Pass the collection plate. Yeah. yeah.
Keep monitors in my office You gotta ask 500 bands Your money go long This is like Actually we're looking for um, 700 people that maybe could give a thousand dollars each which is a seven hundred thousand dollars we need to fulfill this project Whew.